Alarms are on high alert. The granite beams of the first ceiling of the king's chamber have just cracked, now that the pyramid is raised more than 100 meters above the Giza Plateau. The enormous load on the limestone rafters, which straddle the relieving structure above the king's chamber, linked to slight subsidence in its south wall, has caused the beams to crack. This incident is the origin of much speculative theories, going as far as suggesting the builders abandoning the king's chamber in favor of another as yet unknown design. Thanks to the simulation and to the computer calculations with software used chiefly to carry out virtual car crash tests, it's been possible to retrace the history of the successive cracks in the beams of the first three ceilings. Contrary to generally accepted ideas, we note that the cracks appear a long time after the completion of the construction of the king's chamber, under the combined effect of the subsidence of the south wall and the separation of the rafters. Now we come to the heart of the theory, the internal construction ramp. As we've seen, the pyramid is built to two-thirds of its final size using the external ramp. How was the site supplied right up to its completion? The answer. The missing link. A second ramp. This time, located inside the building. Built from the outset and growing with the site, this long spiral of more than 1,600 meters, segmented into 21 rectilinear flights, comes into use only when the king's chamber and the second stage of the pyramid have been completed. It is, in effect, via the internal ramp that the blocks are transported from this point onwards, including those that come from the demolition of the external ramp, which takes place in parallel. Hauling the stones on sledges to the top was relatively easy on this slight gradient of around 7%. However, this spiral ramp involved levering blocks between two flights, hence the need for notch landings open to the atmosphere. Each of these spaces enabled the sledges to be manoeuvred so that they can be aligned in the axis of the next flight. For the higher levels, the blocks were smaller, and hauling them required teams of only around 10 men working in relay from one flight to another. After each haul, the ascending teams returned to their platforms without disrupting the rhythm of the site, using an exterior gangway which is parallel with the flight being used. Here, the purpose of recreating the process in 3D is to quantify the action in real time. Using this procedure, we see that turning a sledge and changing a team on one notched platform takes no time at all, less than a minute, an action that fits perfectly in a relatively tight schedule. The software used to recreate the process serves today to organize the operational processes of a factory by optimizing flow, workstations, their ergonomics, connections between production sites and resource utilization. We thereby see a factory as it functions in real time and we're in a good position to be able to anticipate any event. By considering the pyramid site as an organized and planned site, which indeed it certainly was, these 3D simulations have allowed us to test different organizational configurations. Besides the advantages related to the construction itself, this internal ramp improves considerably the working conditions of the workmen. Hauling takes place in the shade instead of under the glaring sun, in a stable and safe environment. The internal ramp is the only mechanism that allows finished facing blocks to be set on most of the pyramid during its erection. There's considerable evidence to support this. What we call the Pyramidion is the stone which crowns the pyramid. Regardless of how small it was, this mini-pyramid had to be laid very carefully to compensate its weight of around 15 tons. During the site work, the Pyramidion was first hauled to the level of the King's Chamber at 43 meters from the base via the external ramp. Then, and until it reaches its final position, it was raised by rotation using ropes that are tied to a wooden hoisting device. Each time it's raised, its steady slow release from the ground is assured by the torsion of each of these ropes, with its underside in a diamond shape to facilitate its release. The virtual 3D simulation of the way the Pyramidion is lifted enables us to visualize a very simple concept, 
which has the great advantage of requiring only little space, something which is of paramount importance at the top of the pyramid.